That is, you know, that's Bessie. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, yeah, I didn't know, but I was like, I'm not going to have anything at Bessie. It is Bessie, but I think I'm going to go and come mm -hmm. back the Monday. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I'm going to go like that weekend before mm -hmm. one, and then come come in the Monday and mm -hmm. then go to two, then be here for Bessie. Yes. Yeah. Goal. Yes. My husband is nervous to book <coughs> because, you know, <coughs> we booked our we'll book the Airbnb in our wedding. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon, okay. Lisa. You want to mute your line? Thank you. Hi, everyone. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. We're going to give a few more people uh, time to join. Good afternoon, everyone, 
and thank you all for joining us. Today is Thursday, December 2nd, and we are so happy to be able to provide to you our Department of Education Early Childhood Provider Updates. I am Jenna Shasson, the Assistant Superintendent for the Office of Teaching and Learning, and we have a robust agenda for you all today. We're going to be providing some updates on COVID-19, on our child care assistance program, on licensing, teaching and learning. We are also so thrilled to have a guest speaker from the Louisiana Child Care Health Consultant Program on with us today to give us some new learning. So we're excited to have her on and we will get to that portion of today's webinar after we go through our department updates. So welcome, we are so glad to have you all here. And just a brief reminder that we have updated OPH guidelines and we are continuing to work with OPH on flexibilities around the pandemic. We are watching the results of the Omicron variant and we'll let you all know immediately of any updates that you need to know. But just a reminder of all of the resources that you can find on our COVID-19 landing page on our website. And from our child care assistance program, you all, I think, will be happy to see our teacher support grants and ARPA stabilization grants round two timeline on this slide here. You can see that in January of our new year, we will release the teacher support grant round two application. And you can look forward in February to the distribution of those teacher support grant funds. In the end of March, 2022, we will release the ARPA stabilization grant round two, and this will be open for two weeks. We're gonna release those exact dates in our January newsletter. And then throughout April and May will be the distribution of the ARPA stabilization grant funds for round two. To let you all know also that this will be the final round of our ARPA stabilization grants. We also have some licensing updates today. We continue to note a significant number of deficiencies cited for failing to make critical incident notifications. So this is a reminder to you all today that providers must make immediate notification to parents, emergency personnel, law enforcement as applicable, and other appropriate agencies within 24 hours for the following types of critical incidents involving children in care, and those are listed now on this slide. So just um, a really strong reminder to please make those critical incident notifications. We also wanted to let you all know today that we are working to assist providers with obtaining CPR and PFA certification for early childhood center staff. Vendors must be approved by us and registered with the Division of Licensing prior to being paid for training center staff. The vendor also must be able to provide a live demonstration to staff and receive a live demonstration from staff. Each approved vendor may train up to 300 staff at a rate of up to $65 per staff member. Under no circumstances can a vendor who is a director or owner of a center be paid for training the staff employed at their own center. We have a list linked here of current approved vendors. And this also can be found on our Louisiana Believes website under for your, for your information on our licensing page. If you have any questions about CPR, PFA vendors, um, and receiving this training, you can email ldelicensing at la.gov. We have some teaching and learning updates today as well. In response to the pandemic and the additional challenges it brings, we are recommending to Bessie, the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education, a revision that will exempt early childhood classrooms scoring a 4.5 or higher on the fall class observations from a spring local observation for the 2021-2022 school year only. You all remember we had this in place for last school year and we are looking to seek approval from Bessie for this again this year. This proposed revision will expand lead agency's capacity 
to focus on meeting current ongoing community needs while still ensuring that teachers receive support, especially teachers in low performing classrooms. And so last year, Bessie did approve an emergency rule um, around this in Bulletin 140, and they approved an emergency rule in Bulletin 130 for 2021-2022 that mirrors these flexibilities as well. So this will be aligning our pre-K-12 and our early childhood bulletins to ensure that the observation experience of early childhood teachers mirrors the experience of other Louisiana educators. And so this slide here um, gives an example of what this looks like. And so you can see if approved by Bessie, classrooms eligible for the Bulletin 140 emergency rule would receive the same treatment in performance score calculation as eligible classrooms in the 2020-2021 school year. As for 2020-2021, classrooms that are eligible for the emergency rule would have their qualifying fall class scores duplicated and treated as a proxy for a spring local observation. Classroom A in this example in the slide would not be eligible for the emergency rule because their fall score is below a 4.5. Classroom A would still be required in this example to receive a spring local observation and score. Classroom B here is scoring a 5.5 in the fall, so they would qualify for the emergency rule. And its qualifying score in fall 2021 would be duplicated for spring 2022 under this temporary emergency rule. Third party observations will still take place in the spring of 2022. And we would use the typical replacement room rules for the classrooms observed. Just a reminder once again about our early childhood teacher and leader of the year. We are so excited to have this added. Um, as a way for us to really recognize exemplary early childhood teachers and leaders. Applicants for these awards should begin completing the online application. It can be found on our Louisiana Believes Awards page. It is linked here on this slide. You will also submit the requested materials or documents along with the online application. And you all can email devin.camarada at la.gov if you have any questions about applying for these awards. There is no nomination requirement in this initial year, so any interested early childhood teacher or leader may apply. And a reminder that these applications are due by midnight on January 12th. This slide shows a timeline of our Teacher and Leader of the Year Award. So you see those applications opened back in July, they will close in January. And you see further down the line about our selection process. And finally, the announcement made this summer at the Teacher of the Year Gala. There is, um, there are two upcoming webinars, both on the Teacher of the Year informational sessions. So you can see here on the slide, they are both linked. One will be held on December 14th and another held on December 15th. So anyone who is interested in learning more information should join either one of these webinars. Also wanted to bring some information about our LA4 and NSECD quality grants. And so we are funding a grant opportunity to assist LA4 and NSECD childcare providers. This grant opportunity will assist LA4 and NSECD providers in their efforts to offer a full day of high quality pre-K as you all continue to recover from the financial impacts of COVID-19. So this grant will provide an additional $1,000 per child served by LA4 and NSECD in a licensed childcare setting only. In order to qualify, providers must be a type three early learning center and a current BSE approved LA4 or NSECD program applicant and open and serving children at the time of the application. Eligible providers will receive the grant application on December 6th and applications are due December 17th. You all can email keisha.grayson at la.gov if you have any questions. An update here on our school readiness tax credits. So our teachers, directors, and families should be receiving those SRTC forms in December and January. 
all teachers and directors, a reminder, you all have an early childhood ancillary certificate that expires before the end of the year. You should immediately begin the renewal process via our Louisiana Department of Education Educator Certification Portal. For re-leveling with Louisiana Pathways Career Ladders, new credentials and certifications should be submitted before December 31st to Louisiana Pathways. This upcoming tax year, families may see a temporarily higher school readiness tax credit. Centers must distribute the SRTC forms in order for families to receive the tax credit. So just a reminder about how important that is to distribute these forms to families in January. Director and staff member tax forms will be mailed in January. And for assistance filing taxes and claiming SRTC credits, please advise families and staff to call 211 to get connected to free local tax preparers. If you have any questions about school readiness tax credits, you can contact amita.walker at la.gov. This is a reminder to all licensed provider types, including CCAP certified family child care providers, that through June of 2022, we are offering one-on-one -on -one consultation hours. And through March, 2022, we are offering business trainings with First Children's Finance. These business trainings and consultation offerings are intended to help you grow your business, stay on top of your finances, increase your earning potential, and so much more. The one-on-one -on -one consultation hours offer you a unique and valuable opportunity to ask more in-depth questions about your individual business needs. Training and consultation participants surveyed by the department have re reported so far 100% overall satisfaction in the content knowledge received and have noted that without a doubt, this knowledge has helped them to be better leaders of their programs and better business operators. If interested, please register using the link on this slide. You all can contact shallon.jones at la.gov if you have any questions about these business training opportunities. So this slide just outlines again that we know that providers have experienced changing finances that impact their taxes. So we have contracted with CPAs to provide support services to you all as needed. And so early childhood trained tax professionals will provide up to two hours of tax consultation to a limited number of early learning providers of all license types. And so there's an interest form linked here on this slide if anyone would like to schedule a consultation. And again, you can contact shallon.jones at la.gov with any questions about this opportunity. And next up, I am thrilled to announce our guest speaker from the Louisiana Child Care Health Consultant Program. We have Nora McCarcel with us today. Ms. McCarcel, thank you so much for being on. We are happy to have you. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, thank you for allowing me to present information about the Louisiana Child Care Health Consultant Program. As she said, I am Nora McCarstall, and I am the Louisiana Child Care Health Consultant Program Coordinator. Next slide. The Louisiana Child Care Health Consultant Program is housed in the Louisiana Department of Health, Office of Public Health, Center for Community and Preventive Health within the Bureau of Family Health. The program is designed to assist Louisiana child care centers to meet annual licensure requirements for education and training on health and safety topics. CCHCs provide consultation, training, information and referral, and technical assistance to ECCE staff. Uh, a little bit about the child care health consultants. I am employed by the Office of Public Health with the Bureau of Family Health. My position is the, uh, my primary position is the pediatric statewide nurse consultant, working mostly with children's special health care services program with children and youth with special health care needs. After I started as a pediatric statewide nurse consultant in 2019, the CCHC program was added to my duties. 
Most consultants are independent and are reimbursed directly from centers. Others are hired through school systems, resource and referral agencies, and Head Start programs. Our website uh, has a list of all active consultants. Next slide. So uh, centers can contact consultants directly and uh, the contact information for all of our consultants is on our website at laccc.org. They can also contact consultants through resource and referral agencies. And many of our consultants are also first aid uh, CPR instructors and pathway instructors. So they often receive requests by clients uh, as a result of other services. So here is a list of training topics provided by our consultants. The most requested topic is medication administration but consultants also provide a variety of health and safety trainings. Next slide. So as far as legislation, uh, medication administration training from a child care health consultant is required by legislation for all early child care and education staff who administer medication. Whether the center administers medication or not, at least two staff members must be trained. Medication administration training must be completed every two years. Centers are also required to have 12 hours of continuing education per year, and three hours must be on infectious diseases, health and safety, and or food service preparation. So these are also provided by child care health consultants. The medication administration training conducted every other year can count as the three hours of health and safety for the year in which it is conducted. Next slide. So currently in Louisiana, we have 130 uh, CCHCs. To be eligible to be a consultant, they must have a current license as a nurse, physician, dietitian, or social worker. Uh, currently, we have 113 nurses, one physician, three nutritionists, and 13 social workers. So the vast majority of our consultants are nurses. But if you're looking for uh, food and safety and those kind of things, you definitely can uh, reach out to a nutritionist or a social worker who specializes in other topics. Next slide. So for our training requirements, new consultants complete online courses, they shadow an experienced consultant, and they attend the next annual conference. Uh, the online courses include what an LACCHC should know, the LACCHC program, sanitary code, food safety, and medication administration. To maintain certification for at least two years, uh, consultants must attend the CCHC annual conference. Uh, conference agenda and topics vary from year to year. The topics are based on current health initiatives, uh, issues reported by center directors, licensing agencies, and as well as consultants. We did just have our annual conference in October. We did it virtually this year. Our topics included supporting breastfeeding in childcare settings, uh, vaccine overview, understanding licensure for early learning centers, medication administration and the role of the consultant, food allergy, nutrition and food safety, and sanitary code. Uh, consultants must also provide training to at least four different childcare centers per year. They must su submit activity reports of the trainings they provide and participate in at least two CCHC continuing education offerings. Next slide, there we go. Um, we're, we're hoping to build a more robust training and continuing education process for our consultants. And we plan to align the Louisiana uh, CCHC program with the Early Childhood National Center's childcare health consultant competencies, as well as the Caring for Our Children guidelines. I'm also part of a multi-state CCHC work group, and we are collaborating to hopefully create national standards and trainings for child care health consultants across the country. Next slide. 
Um, we soon will have a new platform for data collection for the CCHC program. Social Solutions ETO is our new data collection platform and is currently being built. CCHC will be able to enter all of their demographic and contact information, as well as the early learning centers information and trainings provided. The hope is that this will help us to collect better data about the services we're providing, as well as easier use for our consultants. And that is the CCHC program in a nutshell. Any, any questions? Hello. Well, thank you, Ms. McCarcel. We have, I don't think we've had any questions come in for you. Thank you so much for joining us today and for offering that wealth of information to the providers on today's call. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. And by the way, we do have several consultants who are CPR um, trained trainers. So if you need more, let me know. I can get the word out. That is wonderful. Thank you so much. I know a lot of people on today's call, um, including us here at the department, are really happy to hear you say that. So thank you so much. Can I, can I ask a question? Um, are we going to still be able to, to have virtual training? I heard that that was phasing out, and we're very sad to lose Nurse Nikki. And so I, I was wondering whether virtual training might be something that we could continue. That, that is a possibility we'll be continuing virtual trainings. Um, of course, it is better to do it in person, but especially with COVID right now, we are definitely gonna to continue to do virtual trainings. If y'all have any other questions, if you could please put them in the chat. I have a question in the chat. Can you hear me? Yes, I sure can. Okay. We oftentimes, when the announcement is posted that there will be training in health and safety, by the time the teachers get out of the classroom, it's already filled up. What can be done to have them offered more frequently so that you know we can have more people join? I, I second that when Hi, this I, is Lisa. Um, we, we will, we are currently trying to add more vendors to the list. Um, I think with, uh, with the health consultants, as well as adding to the list and the R and R's, we're, we're hoping to, um, to be able to handle that, those, that many people. If you're having issues, please contact our department of licensing or division of licensing, and they will assist you on that. We are constantly adding um, folks to that list. I would expect that by next week we'll have um, a significant number of additional vendors added to that list. So please don't hesitate to, to contact us and we'll help you. Nora or uh, Jenna, could I speak to that? This is Diana Constant uh, with the Jenna for Children. Diana, did you have a question? I see you have your hand raised. I, I do, and uh, I had my hand raised, but it keeps it. It I keep getting muted by the uh, presenter. It says I don't know what's happening, <laughs> but anyway, I, I'd like to speak to that. And I know uh, Sheila is from the New Orleans area, and we are uh, presently working on getting more health and safety trainings in our area. I recognize, and I get calls all the time I, as a CCHC for more training. And so I will address that this afternoon so we can at least get more in our area. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for jumping in and saying that and letting everybody know too. Okay, I'd like to, we'll move along now. Um, and I'd like to let you all know a few more important dates to make sure you mark your calendars. Um, to let you know that, firstly, we will not be having a January provider update. Um, with the holidays, with the Christmas holidays, it gets really tight to fit in a January call with our February call being so quick on February 3rd. It's so early in the month, the way it falls for the month of February. So our next 
provider update call will be on February 3rd. In the meantime, if you all need anything, you know how to reach us. Um, but our next update call will be on February 3rd. Wanted to also let you know we are super excited to ask you today to save the date for our first Early Childhood State Conference um, to be held in July of 2022. This is for all early childhood provider types. And so be held at the Memorial Convention Center in New Orleans, July 22nd through the 24th. The audience for this state conference will be owners, directors, teachers, staff of all early childhood provider types. So this is open to type one, two, three, family home, in-home school. Um, and just to let you know that you all can use ARPA stabilization grant funds to pay for travel, food, and lodging. You all will notice that this um, is purposely set on a Friday through Sunday, knowing that um, you all are very tied up during the week taking care of our little people. And so we purposely made this a weekend conference that I think is really just going to be filled with a lot of great networking, a lot of great information and new learning for all of us. So we are certainly looking forward to our Early Childhood State Conference in July of 2022. So go ahead and plug those important dates on your calendar and know that as we meet um, back in February, we will have more information over the months to come about this conference. So go ahead and for now, plug those dates on your calendar and please plan to join us. I will pause quickly and see if we have any questions in the chat. Now's a great time. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. We've had a few questions come in um, for people asking for help really specific to them. So we're trying to get those answered um, for anything that's just questions for an individual and not really something applicable to everyone. But I'll pause quickly and check. We'll make sure and see if we have anything that we need to answer right now to everyone. Hi, this is Lisa. I'm just going to answer a couple of questions that we see. Um, I think there's a question about temperatures uh, and, and screening of children. Um, the uh, OPH is allowing some flexibility regarding screening, so you do have that flexibility to take temperatures or not. Um, we are still working with the, the OPH uh, guidelines to have them posted, um, to have the most ver current per, uh, version posted. Um, but if you look back at last um, month's um, webinar, it, it has a lot of the, the updates in that one as well. Um, as far as COVID guidelines, uh, how to check, uh, it, it, there's a question about 14 day quarantine. Please check with your local health department for quarantine requirements because those that vary. Um, there may be instances where only a classroom that needs to be closed. So your lo local health, health department can help you in that. Um, as far as the requirements for CPR, um, uh, I think that's a question for, for Nora. So we're going to um, just relay that to Nora and we will get that information out to you um, about that. Um, is there a fee for the conference? At this time, there, we, we don't plan on there being a fee. We are working through the budget. Um, so we're, we're, I don't think we're going to charge a fee, but um, I will tell you, and I think, I think Jenna did, um, say this, but the um, you know the ARPA grant funds can be used for 
uh, room, um, lodging and food for that, for yourself and your teachers. Um, let's see, Head Start issued mandatory vaccine requirements. Will that be in, in effect in Louisiana as well? Uh, if you, you may or may not know, but Head Start is funded directly from the federal government. So they do have their own requirements reg regarding vaccines and masking. And those Head Start grantees have to abide by the uh, performance standards set by the federal government, the Office of Head Start. So those vaccine requirements and masking requirements are required from the Office of Head Start, not from the Department of Education or Office of Public Health. Okay, uh, a question about how our payments can be made to child care after December 31st. We will continue to um, pay off of enrollment. We have, we, uh, and we will continue that. That is a, that will be our, our new standard. Um, we will be checking for attendance and doing underutilization and things of that nature, but we will continue to pay on enrollment. What are the ramification, ramifications of centers are not allowing parents mm -hmm. and citizens? Um, yeah, we just if you have any questions, just contact Department of Licensing on that one. Um, let's see. I think that I covered the question. Okay. Give us just a couple more minutes. There's a few more questions coming in, and we'll be right back. All right, we will answer a few lingering questions that have come in before we close out for today. So one clarifying question that we received 
Um, we know we have some folks waiting on their ancillary renewal process. It is the end of the year. I know it's a time when people are really interested in that. Um, and folks are wondering, you know, how can we find out to check the status of that renewal? And so we are going to drop a link in the chat for everyone on how you can receive an update on your submission. So you can submit a question uh, to our certification team asking them about your submission. So we'll drop a link in the chat about how to ask that question now. And the next question was about teacher support grant, just a little further clarification. I think this was someone who maybe missed the beginning of this call, teacher support grant round two, just a reminder, is going to have the application released in January. And so we all will let you know through the newsletter when that is released in January. And then we will, we will distribute the teacher support grant funds in February. And so this is round two of the teacher support grants. Um, we also ha have some clarification around visitors on campus. So just a reminder that parents must be allowed to come into the building at this point. We announced this actually back at our November call parents must be allowed to come into the building. You can require parents to wear a mask inside if you choose. You can continue to do curbside drop-off and pickup if that works well for you, but you must notify parents that they can come into the building. So if you wanna continue that curbside drop-off pickup, if that is working well for you, um, you know, feel free to continue to do that, but you must notify parents that they can enter the building at this point. You can, as the provider, require those parents to wear a mask inside if you so choose. All right, with that, we will close out today's call. You all know how to reach us. Um, this deck will be posted on our website so you all can access the links. We're gonna drop it in the chat as well. We'll drop it in the chat as well so you all can access all of the links throughout today's presentation. And you know, as usual, that last slide has our email, um, email addresses and phone numbers where you can best reach us. Please let us know what you need from us. And we will hopefully see you back here on February 3rd. Have a wonderful and blessed holiday season. Thank you all for joining today.